Hey everybody, welcome to the C3 Comic Show, the first one of 2015. Hey, we're back. Did you think that would happen? I, I, I knew it would happen. Let's dive into your news. It's being reported recently that George Lucas was actually thinking about making a Star Wars Episode 7 prior to the Disney buyout. I'm just going to put up a picture here of Jar Jar. I'm going to let you think about that one for a minute. Go ahead. Let's all live in that world. Comicbook.com is reporting that the number one selling Blu-ray of this past Christmas season was Guardians of the Galaxy, beating out thought favorite Frozen. So if you have any friends that are really into Frozen and are upset that it's not the number one Blu-ray, you gotta tell them, you gotta let it go. Ooh. You suck. You suck. That's a fact. There'll be pictures. Marvel might be bringing back the Abomination, the character from the Incredible Hulk movie. Tim Roth, in an interview with Crave Online, stated that they were actually talking to him about possibly bringing it back in the Age of Ultron movie. No word yet on what DC plans on doing with their Abomination. And in other news, on December 28th, it was Stan Lee's 92nd birthday. So you should go out, get him a present, send him something nice. If you don't know his address, you should look up the address of Juke Joint Comics and send it to me, Kyle. I'll make sure he gets it. I know him, personally. I have a photo. All right, and that's all your comic news for today. Mike, hit me up with some pics. Maybe some Star Wars? Hey guys, Mike here. Some picks for 2015. First and foremost, thank you so very much for tuning in and subscribing. Hopefully you liked our top picks of 2014, and we look forward to bringing you some of our favorite products of the new year. Kicking things off, the highly anticipated Funko Pop, Guardians of the Galaxy, Dancing Groot, Vinyl Bobblehead, although it doesn't bobble because he's, he's bobbled. Um, retailers were supposed to get these about a month ago, however, due to some shipping errors, they are just hitting the shelves now. Um, I believe you could have found them on Amazon and some of the big box stores, but your local retail shops where you should be shopping should have them on the shelves this week. I believe there's uh, two or three different variants out there. I know there's an Entertainment Earth variant and a Loot Crate variant, and we should be getting the full body Groot uh, within the next month or two as well. So keep an eye out for that. That's the Funko Pop, Dancing Groot, cute as can be. Guys, if you're looking to impress your girlfriend and she doesn't like comic books, nothing says I love you than the Dancing Groot. My second picks of the new year. From our friends over in Japan, Bandai, and SH Fig Yards, the very badass, Injustice, Batman, and the Joker. Super highly detailed, highly articulated. They come with a ton of accessories. They look absolutely phenomenal. The only drawback I have on these guys is their suggested retail price of $57.99. So you gotta be a pretty hardcore Batman collector if you're gonna be looking for these. Um, I have seen them as low as like 45 on some sites for pre-order. Um, check with your local store. I'm sure they can budge with you just a little bit on the price. I'm really hoping this kicks off an entire series of the Injustice line as I'd absolutely love to see a Flash and Green Arrow and Superman and a Solomon Grundy. If Figure Arts would do a Solomon Grundy in this style, I would gladly pay, play, pay, I would gladly pay $57.99 and continue playing with him in the awesome video game. Keeping things short, this week of all weeks is The Return. The return, the return of Star Wars. Number one, coming at you guys from Marvel, back after quite the hiatus. The deal on this, if you guys have been seeing, there's a ton of Welcome Home variants. Dark Horse has had them the last few years, and by last few, I mean 20 plus years. Um, they had done an amazing job as a, an avid Star Wars fan. Thank you, Dark Horse, for everything you guys did over the years. I'm going to get all teary because it's just weird not seeing their name up top anymore. Um, Marvel got it back um, after the Disney acquisition. Here they are. It is back in their hands. Every 
store in America is going to be stocked with Star Wars number one. And the killers on this guy is variants. Variants, variants, variants. You got your Luke looking at the sunset. You got your Han looking dapper with Leia. You got your Luke Skywalker in action figure form. You got your obligatory Marvel Scotty Young cover. Anybody home, you got your sketch variant. Luke looking solemnly over the horizon. Oh, there it is. The regular cover. Um, I was kind of hoping we'd get uh, maybe some, you know, Aunt uh, Peru and back. Maybe a little smoke and ash or something like that. But that might be a little too dark and stuff for the average reader. But these guys coming at you, $4.99. Check with your local shop as there were well over, I believe, I think at final count as of tonight, I believe 100 plus variants. This takes place after episode four. So this is the follow up to A New Hope. Retailers, we were fortunate enough to get a preview copy of this a few weeks ago. And for those of you that are shopping for those on eBay or to the fellow sellers out there that have put theirs on eBay, open up the front cover. Um, Mine is at home. I already put mine in a case as it was personalized to my store and signed by Jason Aaron. So that was amazing. I mean, for all the trash talking I've done about the uh, variants and stuff coming out, that I have to say, thank you, Marvel. Thank you on behalf of Star Wars. Because um, that just makes you feel good. And it is truly a one of a kind book. Anyways, that's my Star Wars pick of January 2014. This beautiful week. You guys have a good night. Hey guys, Josh here from the Game and Frame Connection, part of the C3 Comic Show, bringing you some video game news for this week. First up, we covered this in the podcast. If you haven't listened to it, here's a link. Check it out. The Green Arrow DLC came to LEGO Batman 3, which if you remember, as you should, was my number one pick for the video games last year. Uh, Steve Amell, the person who plays the Green Arrow on the show, did the voice for Green Arrow in the DLC, so he sounds amazing, and you'll probably recognize him if you watch the show. The DLC featured some playable characters like the Black Canary and Slade, and a slew of others, so you'll have to get it, find out who you can play as. It's set on the island uh, that he's stuck on, so if you've watched season one of the Arrow or know anything about him, it's kind of more or less an origin story, so it shows him on the island, trying to survive, trying to get off, trying to transform into something green and pointy. So get the DLC, play it, see how it plays out. It's Green Arrow, it'll be awesome. Lego Batman 3. The news that I've been waiting for for a long time, the wait is finally over. Grand Theft Auto 5 heists are here. And not only that, we have a release date for the PC version. On March 24th, 2015, Grand Theft Auto 5 is coming to every PC that exists and it's going to be amazing and everyone needs to buy it and we'll all play together. But I can only play with 29 of you because their lobbies support 30 people, which is a lot. In any case, the heists are something that we've been waiting for since the game came out. Robbing banks, duping jobs, it's going to be awesome. The heists are coming to the consoles within the couple following couple weeks. It looks like they're going to try them out on PC to see kind of bugs they are, how they play, which is really interesting because normally Rockstar does their consoles first, but that being said, I'm super excited. March 24th, March 24th 2015, Grand Theft Auto 5 on your PC. Get it? Yes. The last bit of news I have for you is something really cool. So how many of you hate loading screens on video games? Everyone's raising their hand right now. I don't need to see you. I know you're out there. Loading screens suck. And with next gen, with all these graphics and everything, if you don't play on PC, your loading screens are long. How do we make them better? Why not add mini games to it? On November 27th, Namco's patent for mini games on loading screens expires. So what this means is more than likely in next year in 2016 going forward, we'll be able to have some sort of interactivity on these loading screens, uh, mini games that'll have high score contests. It, you know, the creativity is out there. Let's see it happen. It'll make loading screens more bearable. For one, I can't wait to see what's being done. Now, the downside is until November 27th, a publisher can't really make anything or get any ideas because that would void the patent or, well, violate it, not void it. But in any case, once that day is over, they can go to the drawing board, 
come up with a game. Who knows? Maybe the mini game loading screens are going to be better than the games themselves. All right, to recap, Green Arrow DLC, Grand Theft Auto V coming to PC, mini game loading screens, bunch of awesome stuff. Ternus, what's going on in the movie world? Hey everybody, Ternus from C3 Comics here, bringing you the uh, frame part of the game and frame connection. You know, like a film frame, it's a whole thing. Anyways, gonna kind of talk to you about some uh, movie news real quick. What's been happening this week? Basically, uh, Marvel released their first teaser for Ant-Man, which I think was pretty awesome. It looks pretty exciting. Um, it is just a teaser though, so we don't really get a whole lot of idea of what's actually happening in the story with the movie. Uh, one thing I was a bit disappointed in. Uh, you don't really get to see kind of uh, where it's going to be taking place in the uh, Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe timeline yet. We have really no indication of that. Um, I've heard rumors that uh, Pym is going to show up in um, Age of Ultron as well in some flashback scenes. So it'll be kind of cool to see how those two movies end up coming together um, in the end. Um, the shrinking technique, uh, as we see in the teaser, looks amazing. Um, Steve Lang tries it out in the shower, and he actually you actually do see shrinkage on there. Uh, he drops down, hits the ground. Uh, it's just the special effects look great. Uh, he's riding around on an ant as well. It's awesome. Everything about this movie so far, I think, is looking a okay. Um, another big thing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe this week was Marvel released their second trailer for Age of Ultron. Uh, we don't see a whole lot more than we did in the first uh, teaser trailer. Once again. Um, but the big thing that I'm excited for in this movie, the one thing that's going to keep me coming back to this again and again and again, Hulk versus Iron Man. You all know you want to see that. That's I could, I could literally watch a movie that was just that. Hulkbuster armor, uh, Hulk, Iron Man going at it. That's that's a whole movie for me right there. Um, and that seems to be the main um, repeating theme they're driving uh, with this uh, movie so far is that Hulk and Iron Man are going to go at it. And Ultron is generally screwing things over for everybody. Uh, we also got James Spader voicing Ultron, which is pretty awesome. Um, but anyways, uh, definitely check out the new uh, teaser trailer for Ant-Man and the uh, second full trailer for Age of Ultron. Here's links somewhere. Alright, and then wrapping things up this week, we got Aquaman, Throne of Atlantis, finally hitting digital download. Uh, it's kind of cool, this movie is basically an origin story for Aquaman of sorts. Uh, if you did watch Justice League War, uh, you will have noticed an astonishing lack of Aquaman, and instead we got Billy Batson in his place. Basically that's because DC wanted to wait for uh, Throne of Atlantis to come out so they could kind of introduce him there. Um, so we're going to be checking that out here, digging into it, uh, bringing you a full review of that later. Um, we may or may not post a link to that on this video, just in case you catch it after the fact. Um, it might be around here somewhere as well. Um, but really, that's pretty much all I have for this week. We got Josh's news. Everything should be good to go. This has been the Game and Frame Connection. Thanks for stopping by. Hey guys, it's giveaway time. And this month we're giving away... A dancing groove. <laughs> you want to speak? Uh, you don't just rise and right, speak. All right. all right, we're giving away a Groot. Right. We're not going again. <laughs> Come on, I don't want to do this again. Uh, all right, we are giving away a dancing Groot, courtesy of Juke Joint Comics here in Bismarck, North Dakota. So, Ooh. how do you win this Groot, you ask? Shh, quit yelling. How do you win this Groot, you ask? How do you win this group, Josh? Well, I'll tell you. You have three chances to win this group. If you like this video on Facebook, if you comment on the video on Facebook, and if you share it to your friends, you get up to three entries. I will be picking an entry by random, and they will win the dancing group. That is so cool. I am doing that right now. I want that free dancing Groot. I don't... Kyle, I don't think we can win the dancing group. Well, why am I here? Why am I here? Mmm, <gasps> tasty.